paper tears and cut paper, they're probably the um, most common menace that we face in book repair. I wanted to make a quick point before showing you a few methods of paper mending um, about the different types of tears. So um, it seems um, a small distinction, but it's important. Um, so one thing, rarely probably are you facing just a clean cut where someone has used scissors or a knife and cut through the paper. But that kind of tear and a pretty straight tear where the paper fiber um, splits apart quite evenly, probably because the tear happened with the grain of the paper, those tears are um, a little bit easier to fix because you're just matching the two sides up to each other. There's also what's called, it has different names, but what's called a scarf tear or a beveled tear. With the beveled tear, you can see that there's an overlapping part of the fiber there. So it isn't just the two pieces that are coming up together. The paper fiber is really overlapping. So it's important when you're fixing this kind of tear to really make sure that you have what's called, I like to call it your over and unders, but make sure that things are facing the right way, especially when there's text or image on the page so that things line up correctly. I'll show you about that one in a minute. So I want to start with one of these straighter tears. One of the, um, probably the easiest ways to fix that, and if I asked you right now how you fix it, probably you would say tape. <laughs> it's not uncommon to use scotch tape, and in a pinch, that's fine, that works. The problem is that the adhesive on tape, on pressure sensitive tape, tends to break down over time, and it gets yellow. Sometimes the um, plastic carrier of the tape peels away, and you have that yellow stain that's on the paper. So long term, it isn't a great solution. But if we're talking about, um, you know, accelerated reader books that you're not going to have in your library all that long, they're thin paperbacks, you're going to use them a bunch and then um, perhaps replace them, then um, tape is fine. That, that's a quick and easy repair. I want to show you a few alternatives. So one of them is Filmoplast P tape. This is also a mending tape, um, but what's different about this one is that it's a more archival option. So it's not going to yellow with age and it's going to um the the paper care it has a paper carrier instead of a plastic carrier. So it's going to have a matte surface rather than shiny. So aesthetically it's a little better, but it's also better because you don't have um that plastic carrier against the page. So it comes on a roll. You can get this and I'll have all of the resources available for you after the workshop and I'll tell you where each of these items is from. Um, but Filmoplast, it comes on a backing and it just peels away from it just like tape. You can either cut it to the size you want or you can tear it um, once you have it off the backing. The backing is kind of hard to tear so you wouldn't probably be able to tear it while it's on that. But I'm just going to um, cut, I'll say, a little longer than my tear there. And I'm going to peel it apart. Oops. Sorry about that. I'll peel it apart. You can see it's shinier on the one side, matte on the other. And I won't insult your intelligence by telling you how to use tape, but you're just going to lay it down, burnish the surface, and if you have that spreader tool, you can make sure you're having a really good contact everywhere, and the tape almost disappears. Now I'm leaving that end exposed because I wanted to show you two different options. One is that um, you can cut this and use this piece of tape somewhere else. But because this is going to be a page in a book and it's going to be flexing back and forth, probably the best thing to do is just to turn the paper over and smooth it down on the other side. That way you're getting that support on both sides of the page. And obviously if you're doing this inside a book, it's a little bit harder than with a loose sheet. But for demonstration purposes, I wanted to be able to show you. So that's the Filmoplast P. I don't know if you can see in the light there, um, 
but it almost disappears. So a similar option to the film class P tape is heat set tissue. Just like it sounds, heat set tissue is set with an iron. So it also comes on a backing. In this case, it has a graph paper backing to, that makes it a little easier to measure and cut. Um, but it peels off and the heat set tissue can be um, torn or cut. But the adhesive is already on the back. And if you happen to tear some off the backing and you can't remember which side is which, the side with the adhesive on it is much shinier than the other side. Because I'm working on a cutting mat here, I'm going to put a protective board down. I don't want to burn my uh, cutting mat. But to mend this, what I'm going to do, I want to tear it to the size I need it, or you can cut it. The torn edge kind of blends in with the paper a little bit better. So I'm just going to match the length of my tear. I'll lay it right where I need it. And I have parchment paper. And parchment paper basically is going to allow me, I'm going to put it down on top of my mend so that my iron doesn't stick to the heat set tissue. If your iron comes in contact with the heat set tissue, um, it will burn it um, and you'll be able to tell, It'll, you'll see it. So I'm laying that down on top. And I have this little iron, I wanted to show you that. This is a little uh, travel iron that's really pretty handy for mending. It's harder to do this with a big iron, but a big iron works fine. So if you have one around, use your regular iron. I like to start with the heat setting on about medium for different irons, it's uh, different temperatures, but start lower than you need. And if it doesn't seem to work, then you can always turn it up. So I'm gonna hold this in place and basically I'll just press down for a few seconds going over it and then I'll check it and it looks like it's adhered pretty well the way that you can tell is it actually gets more translucent you can see through it it becomes a little clearer um, when it's adhered properly. If you feel like there's still a bit that's sticking up, then just um, you can adjust the heat up a little bit, or you can adjust what's called your dwell time. Just stay on it for a little bit longer, and it will sort of melt into place. So in the same way with the Filmoplast tape, you probably want to put a reinforcing layer on the back side there. So I'm going to tear another piece to the length I need it. I don't know if you can see my tear there. Lay it down and again the shinier side is the side with the adhesive on it. I'm not worried that it's sticking out beyond my page and I'll show you why. But I'm going to lay that down, hold it in place. It looks like it's adhered pretty well. So now I have a better, stronger repair. And what I'll do for that is I'll just trim it with scissors. Again, it's a little fussier if you're fixing something in a book, but you just do the best you can. In that case though, it might be easier to slip a board in between the pages and use a knife to cut off the edge if you can't get your scissors into the book to make your repair. So for the other kind of repair, I wanted to show you for the, for the beveled tear, there's an extra step in there. What you want to do, if you were to just take the Filmoplast tape or the heat set tape and adhere that down, even on both sides, you're leaving that part that's overlapping with no adhesive in between. So you want to first get adhesive in there and stick that part together before you do whatever kind of reinforcing mend on either side. So I have a piece of waste paper here. I'm going to set that down and I have a little bit of a smaller brush that I'm going to use for this. Again, it's been in the water so that it be a little easier to clean. Dip in my adhesive here. 
try to do this so that you can see. So I'm just trying to hit that overlapping part. I'm not putting adhesive all over. And I'll hit the back of this one as well. Just the part where the paper is delaminated. Again, you want to make sure that you have your over and unders in line. Make sure that you've got your text lined up before you press down. It looks like I do, so I'm just going to press down lightly with my finger first to set it in place. And then I can go back with that spreader and burnish it a little bit. Make sure I have good contact. You could stop right now and, and let that dry a little bit or uh, go ahead and go to the next step. I do want to make a quick point though that if you're doing this repair and it's in a book, then what you want to do is put a protective sheet between this page and the page behind so that when you're mending this you're not getting adhesive on the page below. Um, so I would recommend wax paper. If you put wax paper in there it won't stick and um, that'll serve its purpose. I forgot to do that so my waste paper is sticking to it a little bit. So right now I have a repair. You can see the tear is stuck together. However, it's not a very strong repair. So what I want to do is go over that with something else. I could use the heat set tissue or the filmoplast tape, but the heat set tissue, there's glue in there already and so I'd be afraid that something would happen with the glue that it might discolor with the heat. So I'm not going to use the heat set for this. Instead what I'm going to do, I have a very thin piece of Japanese paper and Japanese paper has very long fibers in it so you can make a very thin sheet and it's very strong because the fibers lock together. So. Um, I'll take a piece of Japanese paper and again I have, I'll have a list of resources for you where you can find all of these materials. But I'm going to tear the paper to the size that I need it. And what's good about this is that it kind of disappears once it's stuck down. So because it's so thin you can still read the text through it. And that's the case for the heat set and the filmoplast tape as well. So because I'm going to be using Elmer's glue, it um, sometimes can be a little bit difficult. If you paste this out on newsprint, it's going to stick to the newsprint. So what I have is a very thin piece of plastic here, just a piece of mylar. Um, any kind of plastic would work. You could even work right on your cutting mat and then wipe it after you were done. But I'm going to work on a piece of mylar and I'll lay this down switch back to my bigger brush. As you can tell I always try to size the brush to the job that I'm doing. You want to use the right size so that you're not wasting your time using a tiny brush for a big job or vice versa. So I don't know if you can see the Japanese paper there but I'm gonna just do a very light coat And I'm brushing from the center out because if you start at one end, you're likely to pull the Japanese paper along with you. To get it up off of here, obviously you could use your fingers, but a pair of tweezers works great. That way you don't have to worry about getting so sticky. So then I'm going to lay it right where I need it. And if you get a wrinkle in it, it's usually pretty forgiving. And I'm going to use my spreader. And again, I'm just I'm going very lightly and I'm pulling from the center out. The reason is that the Elmer's glue, of course, is quite sticky and it's going to stick to my spatula as well. So if you have a very light touch, it works much better. And then what I can do, same as with the tape or the heat set, I can flip this around to the other side. And I'll burnish it down. 
just that light touch pulling from the center. And if when it's dry, there's a little bit sticking off the edge, just use your scissors and you can trim that away. And as it dries, it, you, it'll really even disappear a little bit more. But that's kind of the trick to paper mending.